So today, we, this is an introduction to web design. And we're going to try to stick to free tools, although I do want to use a little bit of Photoshop and a little bit of Illustrator just to link back to what we were looking at several weeks ago together. So for now, what I'd like everybody to do is go to sites.google.com. Sites.google.com is Google's own web design platform. And while you're going there, I just want to tell you a little bit about how I came to be a web designer. So I had a five-year gap between high school and starting college. And what that meant is I got to be part of the web generation, which I would not have been. So instead of graduating from college in 92 with all the people that I went to high school with, I was starting college in 93, which happens to be the year that the first commercial web browser came out, Mosaic Browser. And it meant that come about midway through college, we were actually starting to use the World Wide Web. And in my very last semester as a senior, I got into an advanced design class, which was called Interactive Design. And it was one of the first classes offering web design at UMass. Because of that one class, my last semester as an undergrad, I've gotten virtually every job that I've had since 97. Even jobs in places like communes or eco-villages, where you wouldn't necessarily think someone would need tech savvy to get a job. But in fact, not surprising to this crowd, everybody needs a website. Even a little rinky-dick hammock company run by hippies in central Virginia. Um, so I want to share a bit of those skills with you because I think web design is now an essential skill. It is vital to the extent that I believe we should be teaching it to all of our students, really from late elementary school all the way up. Fortunately, it doesn't matter if we teach them or not, so many of our kids are learning it on their own, that right now I know kids in second, third, fourth grade that have their own websites, have their own Twitter handles, even though technically they're not supposed to be online in a public persona until they're 13 years old. They're not going to wait until they're 13. And we got a sense of that from Michael Connell, who was in our class on Monday, talking to us about developing apps for this generation that's going to be the most published generation in history. And he gave us all kinds of great stats. So where do we start? Has anyone in this room created a complete website before today? John, I, sort of tentative. Tell, tell us about your website. Uh, I, I just post my classes onto a website <clears throat> where I have a frame on, you know, on the web for uh, different lectures or whatever, and then bring the other stuff up. And did you create that site yourself? Well, I don't know. That's kind of what you mean. I, I used uh, Dreamweaver. Okay, sure. I would say absolutely you created it yourself if you use Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is just a visual tool that you can use to create a site. The reason I ask specifically is a lot of people are using content management systems or learning platforms like Canvas or Blackboard or those. And if you create a page on those, technically you are doing web design. It's just at a different level than if you're going into something like Dreamweaver. So yeah, the yard... The yard, when I use the yard, I'm not really creating a page. I'm really just editing within sort of pages and, and frames that have been created by somebody else. Daniel, what did you use to create your website? Um, the beginning, I, I just started with Dreamweaver, but um, uh, later I started to use uh, coding itself for uh, getting into text editors. So actually and using HTML in a text using, editor? Uh, HTML and CSS, HTML5 and CS2, CSS3, I know about it, and cool. some JavaScript. And right now I write my, or I design by coding directly in Sublime Text mm -hmm. and loading any, anything to a server via FTP and checking what I'm accomplishing by coding. So I was hoping there'd be someone like you in this class, Daniel. What I want to ask you, if you could explain to the class why, when there are all these rich, powerful tools available like Dreamweaver or platforms like WordPress or Google Sites, why do you choose to still do some coding by hand, just typing out code rather than visually putting something together? 
Mm, I think so. I think that's just because you can control every aspect of the elements you're including. It's not only it's not only uh, putting all together and, and see if it will appear as you as you would like. The other problem is that the variety of the browsers and the, and the, and the, and the yeah and the devices that people are using uh, nowadays makes it difficult to to get sure if you are if what you are actually designing in Dreamweaver or any any of these tools will appear as you want it to appear. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the two issues that I find to use that, those tools and that's why I changed to actually code. Well, that's great. So control and browser compatibility are two reasons that I would also cite for occasionally editing code. Though increasingly, I'm starting to rely on tools like Google Sites, WordPress, and I do still use Dreamweaver. And I think it might be helpful to look at Dreamweaver. We'll look at that a little bit later if we have time, just because it's certainly the most popular, dedicated, standalone application for doing web design. I want to add a few other reasons to that list of why why use HTML or coding. And I'm not saying that we're going to you're not going to be doing everything in HTML and coding. I just want to give you a taste of it because it can be really useful. I would say that speed of development is another reason why I tend to to edit code. A lot of times I can very quickly copy out a chunk of code, put it somewhere else, move it around, change it, go between different pages. Um, so I'd say that in that respect, it's people like using those other packages in general because the learning curve is, is lower. Exactly. And when you go, but once you know and understand how to do the actual coding, it's a lot easier. I mean, Right, they are. I'm fluent. <laughs> well, I, I also want to be transparent about it. So I learned web design in 1997. That was the semester that I took that web design class. In 97, there was no such thing as Dreamweaver. There were no applications commercially available for doing web design, which is odd because the original conception of the World Wide Web was that we would all be fluent in creating pages, not just reading pages. So Mark Anderson, who created Netscape and, and also created Mosaic, one of the early web browsers, and really some people would say kind of created the concept of the World Wide Web, his vision was that we would edit those pages as easily as we would click on a link. He always intended there to be editing or coding tools. And in fact, Netscape had a version called Communicator. Did, did anyone use Netscape Communicator? Maybe around 2000? So Netscape Communicator packaged all the tools that you needed for designing your own web pages. That was so popular that when Netscape ceased to be and the Mozilla Foundation was set up, a bunch of people, hey, what's up, man? A bunch of people open source, and you're at good timing because I'm still just at the babbling phase. Okay. We haven't actually <laughs> built anything yet. Okay. Um, they spun off that part of Communicator and they made it into a standalone open source tool for editing websites, for doing web design, and I want to tell you that, and I'll add this to our resources for today, it's Composer spelled with a Z. If you go to composer.net, I'm going to copy this right here and paste it right into our page. You can download Composer and it works very similarly to Dreamweaver. In fact, in some ways, it's superior to Dreamweaver. It's a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit, it requires less RAM, basically. So you can do things without kind of bogging down your whole system. If you have Dreamweaver and Photoshop open on your computer, you almost can't have anything else running, no matter how much RAM you have. They're so resource intensive. Um, so I'm going to add Composer to our site by going into the editor in Google Sites, pasting it right there, and clicking Save. So what did I just do? Why would I narrate myself actually doing that step, although it looks like I'm going to need to fix some code? Another reason that it's good to know HTML 
What did I just do? So I introduced you to this site. I actually gave you the bit.ly address while I was struggling to get our projector to work properly with my laptop. Said I would put all the resources here for today's class. And then what did I just do to that page? Edited it? Yeah. I literally just went back to the page, clicked on edit this page, and pasted in the code that I copied right from my Google search. So in that respect, how does this differ from updating wiki pages? Very good question. So the idea of a wiki page is that anyone can edit it. So by default, wikis are set up to allow editing to happen and also to allow anybody to roll it back one. Mm, so cool. you have the power of anyone being able to edit it, but also anybody can fix whatever it was that just happened. Google Sites can be used like a wiki. So hold on to that question because it's a really important difference between Google Sites and WordPress. And that's really, one of my objectives today is to help each of you decide whether Google Sites or WordPress is more appropriate for your project.